this generation does not intend to founder in the backwash of the coming age of space. We mean to be a part of it. We mean to lead it. In God's speed, John Glenn. Good Lord, ride all the way. As our knowledge of this universe in which we live increases, may God grant us the wisdom and guidance to use it wisely. The European Space Agency is working to take humans beyond low Earth orbit and deeper into the cosmos. Our next destination on this journey is the moon. Time to go. Orion is NASA's next generation spacecraft. Stay cool. This is a Thor News presentation. We've got a video message. I'm gonna have to science the shit out of this. Hit the button, baby. Thor News presents... Well, what do you know? One week from the day that I went to a NASA press event, they are announcing that they're going to join forces with the European Space Agency for a historic 2021 manned Orion mission around the moon, the first time humans have left low orbit since 1972. If you're eagerly awaiting that full video with full commentary, be patient, because I still don't even know how to put those emotions into words that I can convey to you. But one thing I was mildly extremely disappointed about was it didn't seem like anyone there was ready to pivot to the moon or Venus anytime soon, but apparently I was wrong. First Orion mission will be uncrewed. There you go. Wait, what? Oh, yeah. See, I'm a big fan of human space exploration, and I don't get a boner for robots yet, because most of them look like freaking robots, man. So I was trying to joke and shit, and it didn't work. Anyway, an uncrewed mission is expected to launch in 2018. Oh yeah, but the manned mission is set for launch from NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida as early as 2021. Asterisk will include up to four astronauts and be the first time humans have left low orbit since 1972. What you guys should do, man, is like sell lottery tickets to this thing. And so, you know, have like a, and the, if you get picked, you get to go on the capsule. And hey, if they aren't in shape enough, and so they have major physical damage, it would be their own fault. You know, you gotta be in shape, you're in a freaking capsule. <sighs> anyway, ESA and Airbus have now agreed with NASA to build a module, the manned mission. You know, and I was thinking, when I was at NASA, I was thinking, that's what I liked about the shuttle, because it was both a capsule and a rocket. And now we just have a capsule rockets. Mankind has taken a major step towards leaving the orbit of Earth first time since 1972. <sighs> the European Space Agency says it will contribute key components for a future NASA mission to take humans around the moon in the next four years. Think about how cool would it be if they just had like luxury liners, you go drink margaritas and circle Earth or circle the moon and stuff. I don't know. Sometimes I think they don't want to get people excited about space. The European Space Agency says it will contribute a key component for a future NASA mission to take humans around the moon for the next few years. Astronauts haven't gone beyond a low Earth orbit since 1972, when NASA ended its Apollo program. The mission will use NASA's Orion capsule to carry up to four astronauts around the moon. First time humans have left low orbit since 1972. The mission is set for launch for NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida, USA, as early as 2021, including up to four astronauts. You know, what's weird is, when I was at NASA, I did ask a lot of questions. I wasn't a jerk. I wasn't there to throw anybody under the bus. One thing I did ask was, has anybody ever had sex in the International Space Station? And they thought it was a weird question. And that's why at times I think, you know, science really needs me. Because sometimes y'all don't think we're right. You know what I'm saying? And so it's like, we plan to go to Mars and populate Mars, right? Like, if you can't have kids in outer space, then... You can't really colonize shit, man, so you gotta find out if you can have kids. I don't know, can sperm even function in zero G? You know. Anyway, it wasn't a weird question. You know, <laughs> I didn't think, but everybody else did. Anywho, the European Space Agency and astronaut company Airbus have already delivered a propulsion and supply module for the unmanned flight of NASA's new Orion spacecraft next year. The agency said today that it and Airbus have now agreed with NASA to build a module for the second manned mission that will fly around the moon as early as 2021. The service module provides propulsion electrical power, water, and thermal control. Thermal control! Thermal control! As well as maintaining the oxygen and nitrogen atmosphere for the crew. The mission is set to launch for NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida, USA, as early as 2021. What are you guys, like, getting paid by the word? What is this, like, third grade trying to pad your paper? You've said that sounds like five times now. You know? Okay. What am I supposed to act surprised that quality journalism has gone down since the advent of the smartphone and... Wikipedia. Crew size and composition will be determined closer to launch. The mission will see Orion follow three progressively elongated orbits 
to reach past the moon and return to Earth faster than any manned spacecraft has re-entered our atmosphere before. Okay. Have I mentioned I'm a big fan of human space exploration? I'd like to return to it. DSA's Director of Human Spaceflight, Dave Parker, explained the mission when it was first revealed last year, saying we're excited to be a part of the historic mission and appreciate NASA's trust in us to help extend humanity's exploration farther afield in our solar system. <sighs> the first Orion the service module will be launched in 2018 on NASA's new Space Launch System. Weird, I got to meet one of the engineers for the SLS. I'll tell you about that later in a really badass awesome video. The month-long mission will be unmanned, aww, and we'll orbit the moon before returning to Earth, testing the spacecraft and the rocket before carrying astronauts. The European Service Module is designed, built, and assembled by a team of companies from 11 countries led by Airbus Space and Defense, based on proven technology from ESA's automated transfer vehicle that flew to the International Space Station five times with splash. Alright, how this historic manned mission will work. The mission plan for the flight is built around a profile called the Multi-Translunar Injection. Sounds like something that will get you high. And technically it is. Or multiple departure burns. Ooh. That's what she said. It includes a free return trajectory from the moon. Well, I don't know if it's free, man. You know, is anything involved with government ever free? Basically, the spacecraft will circle our planet twice while periodically firing its engines to build up enough speed to push it towards the moon before looping back to Earth. After launch, the spacecraft in upper stage of the rocket will first orbit Earth twice to ensure its systems are working normally and nominally. Orion will reach a circular orbit at an altitude of 100 nautical miles and last 90 minutes. The move or burn to get the spacecraft into specific orbit around a planet or other body in space is called orbital insertion. Following the first orbit, the rocket's powerful exploration upper stage, EOS, and four RL-10 engines will perform an orbital raise, which will place Orion into a highly elliptical orbit around our planet. There you go, there's the mission profile for a first crewed flight of Orion. Exciting stuff. You can count out all the numbers yourself. If you can count to nine. If you can't count to nine, you should probably stop watching Thor News and go back to second grade. This is called the Partial Translunar Injection. Do we ever talk about that? You guys are just repeating all that same information. For perspective, the International Space Station orbits Earth from about 250 miles above. That's not true, it's like 50 miles to 200 miles and it bobs up and down. The second larger orbit will take approximately 24 hours with Orion flying in an ellipse between 500 and 1900 nautical miles above Earth. Once the integrated vehicle completes these two orbits, yes, we'll separate from Orion and any payloads selected and mounted inside the rocket's universal stage adapter will be released. Payloads will then fly on their own to conduct their unique missions. After the EU's separation, the crew do a unique test of Orion's critical systems. They will gather and evaluate engineering data from their day-long orbit before using Orion's service module to complete a second and final propulsion move called the trans with the TLI burn, we know. <sighs> the second burn will put Orion on a path towards the moon. And we'll conclude the MTI portion of the mission. The mission, in collaboration with Nia, and I know you said that. I'm done with this. I don't think you guys can tell me anything more. You're just going to keep reading the same shit. Subjects in the simulation were fitted with the advanced crew escape suits. Escape suits? What? Like on a rocket? Oh, well, I'm reading the article for you. Just see if interesting left. Nope. In November, NASA and the U.S. Navy revealed that space pirates will let them do anything interesting. Wait a second. That's not what it says. In November, NASA and the U.S. Navy revealed the success of a recent test in which amphibious transport dock USS San Diego recovered the capsule from what? what am I am reading? Why am I getting mad? Maybe it's the pressure on my brain. Let's say, yeah, this article more filler. Did you copy and paste that, bro? Nah, Eugene certain. All right, I'm done. Space launch system. Okay, cool. All right, peace out. God bless you, everyone. Sorry about this. Or not. Whatever.